Welcome to the show. Let me take you through the details now. The opposition, opposition NDC is demanding the immediate dissolution of the Public Procurement Authority Board. The party argues that the board cannot absolve itself uh, from being complicit uh, in the contract, of, contract for sales scandal. According to the NDC, the board, in spite of knowing that Mr. J is a shareholder of Talent Discovery Limited, approved as many as 14 contracts to the company, a situation the party uh, believes violates the procurement laws. They also add that the board failed in their duty to observe the rules against conflict of interest. At a news conference held at the party's headquarters, as part of its Moment of Truth series, communication director of the party, Sami Jemfi, described as unfortunate the board's defense of, uh, for not playing any role uh, the boss defends that it did not play any role in the scandal. It is clear from the facts contained in the Don't Call Me documentary that the group of people who are currently governing our beloved Ghana have no interest in addressing the socioeconomic challenges that confront Ghanaians other than their selfish, narrow, and parochial interests. As such, Instead of awarding contracts to credible, competent, and deserving companies, the Ekufuara government chose to award as many as 14 contracts to a phony company, TDL, whose intention was never to execute any of these awarded contracts other than selling C to other companies with questionable capacities. This perhaps explains why the Akufuado government has failed woefully to deliver any significant infrastructural developments in the country, despite being the most resourced government in Ghana's history. The NDC is aired by the funny and punny knee-jerk reactions taken by President Akufuado since this PPE scandal broke. The President has resorted to his usual face-saving gimmicks by suspending the chief executive officer of the PPA pending investigations by the special prosecutor and charge into the matter. But it is the view of the NDC, ladies and gentlemen, that the suspension of Mr. ABAJ to all intents and purposes is not deterrent enough. We think that the damning acts of corruption which Mr. ADAJ is captured in the Don Comey documentary as engaging in, including his own admissions and confessions, should have at worst been met with an outright dismissal for other actions to follow. We believe that the suspension of Mr. ABAJ is yet another ruse which is only meant to deceive Ghanaians into seeing this government as one that is committed to the fight against corruption. But you see, the good people of this country are descending and will not be hoodwinked by this gimmick. They know too well how similar cases of suspensions under President Akufuado ended with a record and sometimes promotion of such errant appointees. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, we ask why the governing board of the PPA, an accomplice in this grand collusion, is still in place. It is important to state that the suspension of the CEO of the PPA, Mr. ABAJ, is totally useless and meaningless until it is linked to the immediate dissolution of the PPA board. We say so because it was the PPA board, which despite knowing that Mr. ABAJ is a shareholder of TDL, went ahead to approve the award as a, of as many as 14 contracts to the company under restricted tender in flagrant disregard for the public procurement law and in contravention of all acceptable principles of fairness 
and openness. The PPA board failed woefully in their duty to observe the provisions of the public procurement law and the rules against conflict of interest, but rather aided and abetted the corrupt activities of Mr. ABJ and his fraudulent TDL. The complicity of the PPA board in this scandal, ladies and gentlemen, is beyond doubt and obvious even to the uninitiated. For the board of the PPA to claim that they don't play a role in the award of contracts, as they intimated in their letter to Manasseh Azure, is very unfortunate, as this constitutes an abdication of their fiduciary role as a board. Why are they being paid by Ghanaians? We submit that the continuous stay in office of the PPA board is a clear testament of the fact that President Ekufuado has no genuine interest to unravel the full extent of this cruel scandal and is not committed to the fight against corruption. Also, we wish to ask why the ministers and the relevant officers in charge of procurement in the ministries of Works and Housing, Roads and Highways, Education, Special Development Initiative, the heads of Cocoa Board, Ghana Water Company Limited, the Bank of Ghana, etc., are still at post. Why are the ministers and the relevant officers in charge of procurement in these institutions still at post? Because we know that the procurement processes leading to the award of these 14 contracts to TDL emanated from these institutions and were actually awarded by these state institutions. We also do know that TDL illegally sold these contracts to other companies with acquaintance and in some cases the approval of these state institutions. The NDC therefore holds the view that all ministers and state actors who in one way or the other initiated, facilitated, or participated in the award of contracts to TDL and the subsequent sale of those contracts to other companies must be suspended forthwith. The scope of investigations into this scandal must be expanded to include all these complicit MDAs and state agencies. Ladies and gentlemen, it is only then that we can stand a chance of unraveling the full extent of this stinky corruption. Communication officer for the opposition NDC, Sami Jemfi there. Well, the Ghana Institute of Procurement and Supply says it is summoning the Public Procurement Authority Board's Ejeni Mejay Boating to answer questions on corruption and conflict of interest leveled against him in that documentary put together by Manasse Azuri Awene Contracts for Sale. The documentary, as you're well aware of by now, reviewed how co government contracts secured by a company owned by the PPA chief executive are handed out to interested parties willing to surrender a percentage of the contract sum. The PPA boss is scheduled to meet the special prosecutor on Thursday. But even before that, his membership of the Institute of Procurement and Supply seems to be on the line as he prepares to face executives of the, of the Institute. President uh, of the Institute, Collins Ajiman Sapon, gave a hint on PM Express. Writing to him, we'll give him a time to meet our um, Ethics and Professional Standard Committee. Okay, you haven't done that yet? No, yet, because mm. a letter, I know a letter had been signed. Mm. It will be sent to him. It's been Maybe. almost a week. We got it on Thursday, and okay. Thursday evening we issued our statement. Okay. And we had this Friday. Mm. Remember, yesterday was Monday, and uh, okay. I know the letter is ready, mm. and it's going to go. When and are you In, in our constitution, the, the, the member need to have at least uh, a framework of about 14 Days. That is after he's received the Receive letter. When is he receiving appear. the letter? Hopefully by tomorrow he will, he will receive it. Okay. So from there we'll start counting the 14 days, days mm. for him to appear. Then from there we are also writing to Manasseh to get a copy 
of the documentary. Of the documentary because we cannot just pick what is on the net. We need to make everything. Then from there, we they will call him or he will come mm. because we need to give him the opportunity okay. to respond okay. to the issues found in the video. Mm.